whose pencil is whose? You've both got loads of pencils. But this one's mine. Rosie, you've got lots of pencils. Now go and get ready for school. I've had enough of this in the morning. Go on, shake your feathers. <laughs> oh, my flat's going to seem quiet after this place. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a bit of peace and quiet. Well, maybe we should swap. Or better still, I should move in. Are you serious? Yeah. Well, it's not such a crazy idea, is it? I don't suppose so. It's just after the last few days. And the way we feel about each other. Well, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I suppose it does. It's just you've just taken my breath away, that's all. OK. Well, why don't we chat about it later? I've just got a little bit of paperwork to do and... Well, I'll get someone to drink and... I'll come round this evening. Yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you fancy carpooling? Sorry? I took your advice. Remember that conversation we had before you went away about teaching? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, I'm back in front of a class again, supply teaching at Weatherfield Com. Oh, that's great news, Ken. I must say, I thought the job would have changed enormously since I was full-time teaching, but at the end of the day, it still comes down to you and a room full of young minds. It's still about communicating. Yeah, I don't know where I put my keys. I had them in my hand a moment ago, and it's just... Uh, <clears throat> oh. Hey, have you both got everything? Yes. David. Well, so I have a do's for a living, you know. Hiya. Hello. Is it alright if uh, Todd gets up with us? Yeah, of course you can, as long as we all get a move on. Do you want to ride up front with me, Todd? Hey, that's what I see. Six is fine. David, is that homework you're doing? So, what about it? Well, they call it homework, because you're supposed to do it at home, not in the car on the way to school. I don't see it matters where I do it. As long as you don't drive over any potholes. That is the way every man should be packed off to work in the morning. Did Vera never send you off to work with a kiss on the doorstep? Now, I know you're joking. It'd be a good day if she didn't chase me out of the house with a flaming rolling pin. Not in Martin. Hey, up, Jack. Ah, there you're looking uh, fit and well again. Well, first day back at work, mate. It's a funny old game, that work, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you reckon? Hmm. When I'm at work, I always want to be somewhere else. Yeah, even in the house, not where I'm poorly being and looking after it. All I can dream about is being back at work. <laughs> yeah, well, I've got Sal looking after me. Last place I want to be today is work. Is work. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> See ya. Another night in front of the city, Les. You what? Meal for one. Anything good in the box? Oh, I wouldn't know. Uh, this is for one of the drivers over at Streetcar. He asked me to pick it up for him. I won't be watching Teller tonight anyway. I've got Sandra coming round. All oh, right, this is your girlfriend. That's right. And I'll tell you what, my Sandra, she knows how to show you a good time. I'll say, <laughs> she's a right scream. <laughs> I'll see you later. Well, it looks like he's getting on his life, huh? Yeah. Just this. 29 pence. What's wrong? What? What do you mean, what? Look at you. What's happened? Nothing, I'm fine. Big room. Miss Hazel is pampering herself at some fancy spa. She's fine. You've got nothing to worry about. Apart from her husband. You know, look, I thought we discussed this. You don't know that he knows anything. Yeah, well, I do now. He paid me a visit last night. Are well, you all right? He didn't lay a finger on me. Well, consider yourself lucky, my friend. Yeah, well, I don't think so, Dev. You know, <laughs> he didn't say much. He was creepy. But he made one thing plain as day. That he hadn't finished with me yet. Hello, what do you want? Well, I was out running this morning, just came on, I must have pulled something. Mm, not trespassing on someone's private property, are you? Oh, no, of course not. We just drop it, eh? I'm in pain and need to see a doctor. Well, I can fit you in with Dr. Ramsden at five o'clock. Isn't anyone out? Hello, Matt. Hi. Have a good break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a great time. Even with an army of kids to look after. What about Charlie? Was it a bit like a busman's holiday for her? No, no, no. We, uh, we both had a good time. How was everything here? No problem with the house, I take it. No. No problems. In fact, uh, while well, I think about it, here are the keys. Ah, oh, thanks. By the way, you didn't leave us a bottle of whiskey, did you? Some sort of welcome home present. No, why would I do that? Well, that's what I thought. Only you could have sworn we had a bottle that we'd opened. But now it's full again. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe she'd go away more often then. Yeah, could be right. 
Five o'clock OK for you, is it? Uh, actually, I might just leave it a couple of days, see how it gets on, eh? Mug and tea, is it? Not to begin with. First off, I'd like to say I'm sorry. I shouldn't have had a go at you like that yesterday. You get used to it. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have. I was out of order. Way out of order. The truth is... The truth is you couldn't accept that my man were trying to help you. We don't want to see you get hurt again, Les. So if everything's all right with you and Sandra, then it's fine with both of us. We're very happy for you. Oh. Well, thanks. And what my mum saw, uh, Sandra and that guy, she must have got it wrong. Yeah, must have. So is she all right, then? Sandra? Yeah, she's sound. I'm seeing her tonight. Cooking dinner. Good. How do I know not to waste my time looking for you at work? Why, what do you want? I want you to keep an eye out for Vic. Well, he can look after himself, can he? As he told you, he had a visit from this woman's husband last night. No, he did. Wilding well, warned him off, Vic doesn't think it's going to end there. So why are you telling me this, then? <laughs> because I thought you were supposed to be his friend, aren't you? Yes, but I uh, never get between a man and his love life, especially not between him and her husband. You really are a low life, aren't you? Listen, if Vic wanted me involved, he'd let me know that this wilding bloke could come round. He didn't. So he obviously wants to keep it in the family, which is fine by me. I see. <laughs> you know, at times like this, I realise how important family is. Because some of us just can't seem to choose our friends. Thanks, then. So, yeah. So you're back at the flat now, then? Yep. Well, I know it's none of my business, but I thought that were it. When Sally took you in because you were hurt, I thought you'd never move out. No, no, neither did I. Yeah, well, I think you make a lovely couple of soldiers, Max. No, oh, well, that's as good as royal approval, isn't it? Yeah, well, like I said, it's none of my business. No, well, anyway, you never know. This time next week, you know, I'll be popping in your shop for an extra half pound of sausages. See you later. <laughs> See ya. You look busy. Oh, Rita, do you know, you wouldn't believe it. People come in looking for the right size screw and you would think they'd put them back in the right place, not jumble them all up. It's as if they think I've got nothing better to do with my time. Well, that's folk for you, always mixing things up for other people. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. What can I do for you? Oh, Norris, he's overloaded the magazine shelf and the brackets fell down. <laughs> Must have been a heck of a lot of magazines. I know. I think he's been swinging on it, chimpanzee fashion, truth be to tell. Anyway, I've left him pretending to be a bouquet while I've come to buy another one, if you've got such a thing. Bracket, yeah, I think we can do that for you. Yeah, oh, this one's a good one. It's got all the uh, fittings in it and everything. Oh, thank you. Do you know, it's a long time since I've seen you look as happy. Is it all down to Martin? Well, he suggested that we move in. Well, I can't say as I'm surprised. What have you said? Well, nothing yet. It does seem the right thing to do, though. I mean, I've known him for ages, and I'm really happy with him. And the girls have taken to him just like that. Sounds as if there's a but. Uh, it's just that every relationship I've ever had, Rita, it's always ended up in disaster, and I don't want that to happen with me and Martin. Well, what's to say that it will? Well, it's just law of averages, for one thing. Oh, Sally, you can't think like that. I mean, on the law of averages, they reckon we're all going to be flattened by a flaming great lump of rock from outer space. But I don't see people putting their life on hold because of it. Well, I just want to be sure, that's all. I mean, what do you think? Oh, I don't think it's for me to say one way or the other. This is your decision. So you reckon he's all right, then? Yeah, he said he was sorry for what he'd said. Well, I still told him he shouldn't have gone off like that in the first place. I suppose I must have got it wrong. Yeah, I said. We well, were talking to Dev earlier in Corny Sharp. Everything between him and Sandra's going brilliant. Well, good luck to him, eh? Mm. Mind you, I had a better week's pay packet. There was something going on between her and that bloke. So, uh, how are you, Sarah, getting on? Great. <laughs> what? Even with a kid around. Beth, what about her? Come on, she's got to get in her way sometimes. I mean, girls with little brothers are bad enough, but a baby. Look, it's cool. I really like Sarah. She looks great, she's clever. I mean, she's had an hard time, but that just makes them all grown up. What? And that's what you like, is it? Oh, flaming egg, Todd. You're sounding old now, flipping, man. I'd rather be with someone I could have a proper conversation with instead of an ironing board like Candy. Yeah, well, that I can understand. As long as you know what you get yourself into. 
Like it's safe to drink. Only the word on the street is it's a madman. man. Yeah, hilarious, Steve. I'm talking to Dev, have you? Hi. He's got this funny idea I ought to keep an eye on you. I can look after myself. Yeah, that's what I told him. Anyway, um, why didn't you tell me this Mr Wilding had been with? Because it's my problem. Mm, fair enough. The question is, what are you going to do? Well, I know what I'd do. I'd go away for a while. Somewhere sunny. And then by the time I got back, Mr Wilding should have forgotten about it and uh, she'd have found herself a new toy boy. You still don't get it, do you, Steve? What me and Hazel had wasn't just a bit of naughty in some hotel room. <laughs> Come on, Vic. Look, I am not a coward. I'm not running away. And I don't care what a husband says. I'm going to carry on seeing her. Well, it feels like you've never been away. Sorry? One day back at work, you probably feel like you've never been on holiday. Something like that. You know, I've been wondering whether I should do a refresher course or not. I mean, it's quite a while since I was doing full-time teaching. What do you think? Tell you what, Ken. Do you want to join me for a drink in the Rovers? Oh, uh, well, I'd love to, but I've got a ton of marking to do and I think I ought to keep a clear head. Yeah, of course. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Yeah. Tell Miss Morgan that they left the essays on her desk on a Tuesday afternoon when she's not in, because they know that she's not in then. Anyway, it turns out that Tuesday she was in. Oh, you should have seen <laughs> the looks on the faces. Have you got much homework on tonight? Well, I've got to get stuck into smothering frights. Hey, I did that for GCSE. And it didn't bore you to death? No, I thought we were really good. Romantic, but really dark. Oh, well, if you found it so good, maybe you can come round and show me why. If you want. Hey, I've got a bit of time before I've got to pick Beth up from the crash. Uh, do you fancy going to the cafe for a drink? Sounds good to me. Sorry. Ha. Didn't mean to make you jump. You didn't. Well, that's good. Look, I thought I'd take you for a drink. Maybe we could slip into town, take your mind off things. Car, I'm on switch. Well, where's Eileen or that so-called partner of yours? Mm, yeah. Steve told me that you had a quiet word with him. Did he? Yeah. He told me I should take a trip. Ooh, I'm impressed. That's not a bad idea. Uh, it's a rubbish idea and I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, you're wasting your time there, Dev. I think he's going to stay with her. You what? All right. No matter what a husband might do to him. Tell me I'm not hearing this, Vic. Tell me it's your moronic friend here winding me up. Uh, steady on. I'm on your side here, remember. You know, what is it with you, Dev? Why is it so hard for you to understand that me and Hazel are in love? Tell me. Well, a scary husband for a start. Well, he's already had a go at you once. Do you really think Hazel's going to come and visit you in hospital? Look, he's right, Vic. Look what Jess did to me. You don't want to end up like that. <laughs> this isn't Jez Quigley. It's not the same. Well, you reckon? I acted like a burke then. What do you think you're doing now? Listen to him, Vic. Do as he says. Right? Go away for a while, get some space, think. When you come back, things will seem different. I am not going anywhere. I don't care what a husband does. <laughs> I'm not turning my back on Hazel. Uh, well, where are you off to? You're on the switch. Yeah, well, you know where you can shove that. Well, Charlie. How was work today, then? Ah, fine. Just a day at the office. Not much danger of anything more than a paper cut. <laughs> was you not playing your mind that you could get a tax again? Nah. It's fight to life, innit? One thing that I've been playing on my mind, though. Me and Sally moving in together. Yeah, well, I reckon you made for each other. Yeah, I reckon you're right. Anyway, I've asked her, so just gotta wait and see. Well, not exactly after a ski, I suppose, but you know what they say? There's nowhere like home. Nowhere quite like this, that's for sure. Glad to see you two back in one piece. You never get me on them skis. When my feet hit the ground, I wanna know which way I'm going. Ah, but there's nothing like it though, Jack. Wind in your face, flying down the piste. It's exhilarating. So always watching yours coming first in 3.30. Yeah, but where's the edge of danger? The danger. Can you imagine what our Vera would do to me if she found out what we're doing? <laughs> I see what you mean. Same again, please, Jack, and uh, have one for yourself. Oh, that's very nice of you, Tom. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll just take a, 
It was a small one, a dish. You're a bit quiet. Anything wrong? No, I'm just tired, that's all. Oh, well, late back last night and a full day today. Maybe we ought to finish these and have an early night. Not a bad idea. Maybe even uh, relive a little mountain magic. Who was that for? Um, me. The, the, the doc just offered me a drink, and I, and I always do what the, the doctor tells me. Do you do what your boss tells you, no? Oh, yes, but we'll fail. Oh, good, good. Just remember, you're here to work. Now, I don't mind you catching the off-drink off the customer. That's money in the till, but uh, do remember, you're a pot man. You're not here to stand at the bar all night nattering. All right. Yes, boss. Oh, just look at that. Mm, that's nice. <gasps> yeah. Hiya. 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 You planning a trip, then? Well, soon be holiday time. Yeah, anywhere nice. I'm in two minds, Martin. On the one hand, I quite fancy the Bahamas, you know, yeah. loads of blue water, sand and all that. On the other hand, I've always wanted to go on safari. Oh, safari, eh? Gee, I suppose I might make it to Chester Zoo one of these days. Yeah, well, nothing's decided yet. No. Well, I've got to hand it to you, Richard. You like to do things in style, don't you? Well, it took me long enough to find it. Got to do the best by it. Yeah. I know just what you mean, mate. Listen, I just want to say I'm sorry for yesterday. No, it's me that should be sorry for stirring things up in the first place. Obviously, I were wrong, what I saw. All the same. I shouldn't have said what I did. See, now you just had the best intentions. Well, let's just forget it. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I'd best be off. I wasn't sticking around anyway. No? Don't want to be late for Sandra, do you? No. What are you cooking for her? Who? Sandra, who else? Oh, uh, curry. Chicken vindaloo with all the extras. Very nice. Which takeaway? The usual. Flaming answering machine. Just ring me, will you? If you're worried about your husband, well then don't. Because I won't scare her off that easy. Not when I feel like this about you. I just need to know that you're all right. Look, if you care about me the way I care about you, then you'll ring. Please. I don't see why he can't get into Wuthering Heights. Honest, it's good stuff. You should give it a bit a try. Hmm, for a brain box like you, maybe. Yeah, like you're a thicko. Hey, your mum's not a thicko, is she? No, I'm not thick. I just haven't got time like everyone else. Because of Beth? Well, she comes first. You're my little girl, aren't you, eh? Can't be easy for you. School, Bethany. Do you ever wonder what it would have been like if you'd never have had her? Well, I wish it hadn't have happened when it did, yeah, but I wouldn't be without her. Do you reckon she's ready for bed? Better go on with the book, eh? No, you look wide awake, don't you, eh? It's all right, we'll get started without her. She'll be fine. Right. Oh, wait, hang on. Let's get you something proper to eat, haven't we, eh? Oh, you look fit to eat. Are you hungry? Kids about? In bed. Oh, great. Casa de corner shop. No expense spared. <laughs> I'll get a corkscrew. <laughs> OK. So how was your first day back? Oh, resuscitated a few rosters that were in need of intensive care, stuff like that. But I spent most of the day thinking about us. So what do you reckon? Well, it's a big decision. I mean, it's not just you and me, is it? We've got other people to consider. There's David and the girls. Yeah. That's not a problem, is it? <laughs> what? 
what's there to think about? I mean, yeah, it's a big step and we have got the kids to consider. But we all get on, don't we? Yes, I know So that. then? Well, doesn't it worry you? <laughs> what's there to worry about? Well, we've both made mistakes in the past, haven't we? And what are you saying? That we're going to be another? No. Well, that's what it's starting to sound like. Sal, what's going into you, eh? I thought you loved me. Yeah, and I've loved every man who's ever let me down, haven't I? Kevin and Chris, Danny and Greg. Yeah, well, none of them, am I? No. So why don't you give us a chance? Oh, come on. What is it? Is it Rebecca? No, not especially. Yes, no. it is. Come on, admit it. It's just every man I've ever been close to has hurt me, Martin, and you could do it all over again. <sighs> well, that's how you feel, is it? I don't know. <sighs> oh, right, OK. Well, let's turn things on my side, shall we? Let's say I'm uh, working nights or something at the hospital, and uh, what's to stop you popping round to see Kevin? What? You heard. Don't forget, Sal, it wasn't Danny that screwed things up between you and him, it was you. Jumping into bed with Kevin. That has got nothing to do with this. It's got everything to do with this. This has got nothing to do with us, Sal. This is about you and you and your mucked up life. Well, what if it is? I've gone through enough. Maybe I don't want to mess it up again. OK. Well, that's your decision, Sal. Thank you.